Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I want to see that thong. A thong for thong, thong, thong. Death Spank, Thongs of Virtue, right here. Why am I playing Death Spank, Thongs of Virtue again? Uh, that's a great question. I actually played the original on the PlayStation 3. Got quite a bit of fun out of it. it certainly wasn't the best game ever. Now, when I discovered they were doing a sequel that was being developed alongside the original game, so they really didn't have all that much of an opportunity to improve on the original, I was somewhat skeptical. So, I have to admit, I'm going into this with a little bit of a closed mind. We will see, however. WTF is Death Spank, the Thongs of Virtue for PC. Let's find out. Hmm. Now, the first one was way too easy, so we're doing this. We don't need control of vibration, we're using keyboard and mouse. Really. Combat text? Obviously. We need this and we need combat damage. Numbers are required for a good RPG experience. Indeed, a hack and slash. If you don't have numbers, then you're doing it wrong. Hmm. Always show up name. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Go, Death Spank! Honest. So, you've come to hear more. More of the hero to the downtrodden. The dispenser of justice. The vanquisher of evil. Known most of all as... Deathspank. Deathspank had defeated the evil Lord Von Prong and discovered his life's quest was a lie. For you see, the source of the tyrant's power was a thong. A thong like the one Deathspank wore. Dear God! A thong full of power, justice, and wedging. Deathspank traveled north seeking answers, but some answers are best left unfound. Huh. Captured by his enemies, Deathspank was at his lowest point. But low points for heroes always lead to high adventure. Somewhere, a new challenge for Deathspank has arisen. Seek it out and claim the glorious treasures in your quest for justice. Sounds like a plan. Okay. There we go. So... Death Spank is basically a hack and slash RPG. That's how it rolls. That's what it's all about. It's not exactly the trickiest game in the world. Admittedly, it was designed for console originally. Ooh, delicious potato snacks. How can I keep getting these? No, no, are we? Right, okay, so there are actually only five potatoes in this gigantic pile. Sometimes, busy heroes overlook things. These things then find their way to dumpsters. I've never figured out how, and it's not important. Indeed. Without question. We shall attack the barrel, because this is a hack and slash RPG. We must see what is inside. Inevitably, there will be good things in the barrel, including Consume this. fortune cookies to unlock hints on how to complete quests. These are absolutely unnecessary, if I recall correctly. They certainly were in the first game. Oh, man. Like, yeah, get some hints on these. Oh, all of these quests are really straightforward. Never mind. Now, these outhouses you do use as teleportation points. Let us battle. Yes, the combat is not what I would call particularly difficult. But I have got a gun, so I believe I do have that equipped now. My first weapon set. Now, in the original game, you were able to swap between weapon sets and sort of... I'd say quad wield. Yeah, quad wield is fairly accurate. There are many weapons I can use at any time and in any location. Assign weapons any place, easy to reach or aesthetically pleasing. On the face, for instance. Don't laugh, it's probably the case. So I can swap between weapons this way. Make sure you do this incredibly exciting, non-specific thing. Do it often, citizen. Indeed. So you can strafe like this, if you so desire. You generally don't need to, although maybe they've upped the level of difficulty on this particular version. 
Now, what I would like to do is actually shoot one of them. But we don't really need to. We can just sort of hack away at them. It's not really a big deal. Now. Okay, my gun works. Now, we used to have a crossbow, but of course this is now, for some inexplicable reason, in a World War II style environment, I guess. Don't know why. No particular reason, as far as I know. There we go. Okay, so I'm sort of now wielding both of these. Now, there is a reason for this. If you use your abilities and you use your weapons in a very specific fashion, then you will earn justice, and you can dispense justice. Although I don't seem to have unlocked the justice meter yet, so never mind. Death to you! Use weapons of justice when the justice meter is full. Fill the meter by hitting enemies, and then smother them in rich, creamy justice! That sounds disgraceful. Let's be honest. This game has its fair share of toilet humor, honestly. If you're not into that kind of thing, I mean, the first game was a reasonable hack and slash. It wasn't anything special. Bear in mind, it was about eight hours of gameplay, maybe maximum. I will eat this chicken, which is actually not a very good idea in combat. There we go. And what ended up happening was you played it through once, and if you didn't like the humor, then it was kind of pointless. If you did like the humor, you got a bit out of it, and then you had no reason to play the game because it had no replayability. Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, this game doesn't do anything to solve that. Have I got all of the loot? I think that's the most important thing. Let's eat some chicken before we do anything. Always eat in your downtime, folks, when you're out of combat. It's a very important lesson to know. Oh, my man, my default pistol is awful. <laughs> it's not even worth it. I mean, until you get something good, you might as well just go charging into the fray. These guys do no damage anyway. Unless... You can also do that. I love the graphic style of this game. That is one very strong point about it. It is excellent. The whole thing is... It's pseudo two-dimensional. It's like two and a half D. You can see you're constantly rotating around the world like this. It's like it's made out of cardboard. Big fan of that. Ooh. It's purple. Purple is good. We know purple. Excellent. Right, okay. So, gear. You replace gear so incredibly fast in this game, it's absurd. Like this, for instance. I mean, do I really need this when I have these? No, not under any circumstances. Follow this handy advice closely to succeed in adventuring. Indeed. So, basically, get rid of it. But you can't, because apparently that's priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's this bloody potato peeler. Fire axe. Fire axe is good. A lot of the weapons are actually very similar, or indeed identical, to the previous game, although there are supposed to be more sets. I can't help but notice that my spaulders are made of rats. Yeah. There's... You can't help but smile at that. I'm sorry, it's just not possible. Okay, what have I got? Right, double axe. We don't really need this, do we? Ah, you can't do that. If it's not... Huh, okay, just won't let me get rid of it. I don't even know why. Have the spade, and we'll put the Tesla rod on the other hand. The Tesla rod was really great the last time, as I recall. And we also have these potato snacks. Delicious and healthy. Although not good if you're on the Atkins diet. Is Death Spank on the Atkins diet? Nobody really knows. Onward for justice. Also this outhouse, which has not been enabled yet. Okay. Greetings, fellow shower buddy. Death Spank. I'm glad you're here. Of course you are! It's shower time soon! True, but you know the plan that me and the boys are cooking up, right? This is probably the funnest bit of the game, and that's the conversations. And again, it only really matters if you actually like the style of the jokes. This is Family Guy style here, and if you don't like that, then it might turn you off the game a bit. Whittling. Sounds like a plan. How about this one? Does it have realistic depictions of violence and or adult situations? Listen, we have a cunning plan of escape, and we need your help. I've never said no to a cunning plan, and I'm not starting today. There's a drawbridge northeast of here. We want you to lower it so we can leave. 
It's not all that cunning. Not sure I'd describe that as a plan, much less a cunning one. Unfortunately, there's one small obstacle that's still in need of a solution. The York Guard will never let you pass Death Spank. Hmm. Well, obvi- A tea party, yes! A tea party is the answer! We could do that, or we could disguise you to look less like, well, you. Right! I could dress up like a lady orc and distract him with my come-hither look. Oh, please don't. What a terrifying image. Just keep the disguise simple, Deathbank. Right. I will pose as a mild-mannered orc soldier and slip by undetected. Much better idea. Good. Once you clear the way, the rest of us can follow. Oh, and beware of the jungle beasts on the other side of the gate. They'll eat anything that moves, even laundry right off the clothesline. Yes, yeah, so dialogue is hit and miss, honestly. Some of it is hilarious, some of it not so much. All right, okay, all right, so I have the Tesla rod, that is a good thing. More quests! That is really all the game involves, as you might imagine. Get quests, get loot. Greetings, Pierre! Talk to Pierre. Quiet this thing! They are listening! We must use the code. Of course. The moose is tall and brown, but today he feasts on haggis. I see. Sounds like a pretty high maintenance moose to me. Be serious, this thing! The underground is relying on you! I don't understand you, Pierre! Use your words! Sigh! Go lower the drawbridge and get us out of here! Why didn't you say so? No problemo! Bien! So you know the password then? Password? You don't know the password? You can't get past the guard without the password! Sure, I know it! The password is... A really stupid thing. It should no doubt be any of these, but I'm gonna go with this one. Strawberry shortcake. Deathbank, please. Without the password, the escape plan will fail before it begins. I guess I'm gonna need to find that password. Any ideas? Ugh, if I knew that, I would already have it. Fine, I'll figure something out. No doubt. The revolt begins now. Vive la revolution! Ha! Huh, the only thing revolting around here is your face. Zing! <sighs> Greetings, Alchemist. Hmm, let's see what's on tap today. There's a lot of talking in this game, which makes me talking very unlikely. Which is okay, honestly. It's sort of like half two in the morning, I'm just chilling. Mmm, delicious chicken. We must eat it. Barrels, which are inexplicably full of cash. Of course. How silly of me. Greetings, Bunk Buddy! Ah, Deathspank, old chum. Impeccable timing. What, 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 what? I assume you've been brought up to speed on our most recent escape attempt. Hmm. The one where we overpower the guards with our seductive psychic abilities. That was last week's plan. We have a better one now. You see, there is a drawbridge northeast of our position. If you lower the bridge and clear the way, we could just walk yeah, out. Yeah, I heard this before. Easy peasy. But you've missed one crucial detail, Despank. Yes. You'll never get past the guard without showing the right papers. Hmm. Mutual respect and understanding will solve that. Oh, let's not be so hasty, Deathspank. We are not without our advantages. It seems that literacy among orcs is rather... Non-existent. Meaning? They can't read! <sighs> They're just waiting for the movie version! The Orc Guard doesn't know the difference between ID papers and erotic equine poetry! Well, I'm thinking they would have slightly different pictures on the cover. That's why you're going to create your own documents. To avoid problems like that. You know- Death Spank, old chap, we're counting on you. Stop talking. For God's sake. Right. You know, I have all of these weapons. Can I not just... You know, for one thing, these walls are made of wood. I have an axe that is made of fire. This seems unbelievably overcomplicated for what I'm attempting to do. Now, can we get back to the killing, please? That would be great. 
A little bit of a slow start to the game, honestly. I mean, this is the problem as well. If you've got through the first game, then you're going to find the same kind of humor. And it tends to get a little old after a while, if I'm to be brutally honest. There we go. You just saw justice power there. And what I am pleased about is the fact that the mouse and keyboard control is pretty solid, because since this was designed for a console initially, I was a tad worried, I must admit. Now, what I will say as well, uh, yeah, this is a weird WTF to be doing. Because I've played the first game to completion, it's just... Ah, it's, it's difficult because I'm not really doing it blind because this game is identical to the first one. Pretty much everything about it, graphic style, even the music is the same. They didn't, as far as I can tell, do any new music at all. All the voice actors are identical, the extras are identical. Because all of this was done at the same time. So it is a little weird. And what I will say about this game is it does have co-op, but the co-op is... basic, let me put it that way. This is a problem I found when I was playing the original, that the co-op is very much slanted towards the guy playing Deathspank. If you are playing the other guy, you can't loot anything, you get no equipment of any description, and as such it is kind of terrible for you. I mean, that's not something that I find all that pleasing. Speaking of things I don't find all that pleasing, while I'm talking I probably should be paying attention to the game. It's okay. You do respawn. So what happens is you get a co-op partner, and this game introduces a second one called Tanko. Guess what he does? There's a mage as well. And they've got some basic abilities. They can't die, as far as I can tell. Actually, do they have a shared health pool? Maybe they do. Whatever the case, they don't have their own health pool. That I can tell you for a fact. And... You can't loot anything with them. So, the guy playing your co-op partner is like a horrendously incapable sidekick. Which is not as entertaining as you would hope. Oh, this gun is not doing too much, is it? Uh, yeah, now, levels-wise, you can probably see that this is going to kick my ass if I'm not careful. I would eat this potato and then I feel mighty once again. Now, the spade does have a special attack, so if I can get a little bit more justice, then I'll be in business. The thing about the justice meter is the fact that it's very easy to fire off your justice attack without really realizing it. Prematurely, one might say. There we go, that's a nice stun. Now die! Please die. There we go, much better. Most of the quests in this game just involve simply slicing and dicing. There are very few puzzles from what I recall, if this one is anything like the first, which in every possible respect thus far it has been. Whatever the case, in order to avoid accidentally firing off your justice attack, you want to switch to a weapon that doesn't actually have one. A lot of your later weapons, however, do, so you do have to be a little bit careful. There we go. Just, see, fired off straight away there. I probably would have preferred a different weapon. Because the justice attacks are different. For instance, that Tesla one is a really big sort of channeled AoE attack. Which is not massively useful. Ooh, a trinket of the improvement. You see, we've actually got all of this stuff. And I think this is actually better than what I've got. Now, you can set it to automatically equip best armor. Yeah, stylish. What I do like about this game is the flavor text. They really did go all out with that one. Very, very funny. Ah, yes. You'll never forget your first upgrade. What was my first upgrade? Hmm. Oh, yeah, the butcher. I bought the butcher for my mage. I was very bad back then. It was, like, four days into WoW. People had no idea what the value of items were. It was pretty horrendous. Aha! Wunderbar! We have sorted out our little outfit. Stylin, we are ready to go to the ball. Where are my weapons? I assume it automatically disarmed me as a result of having this outfit on, which is a tad lousy because I'm fairly sure this outfit was better than what I was wearing previously. Have I missed anything around here? Not by the looks of it. Okay. Now, there is a map as well. 
as you can see. Let's go to speak to one of these soldiers, I think. Who won? No, we haven't got... The turtleneck is only fashionable during speeches. Oh, warning. But my unsightly jowls are well hidden from public scrutiny. A turkey without jowls is like a balloon without sunshine. Bach needs practice, this bank. You just asked me to the prom. Well, I what? didn't hear a no. What? Did I just... Yeah, let's try this one. Dancing with monkeys is exceptional, except for the dung. No means no, Despank. Perhaps I could get the password of a brutally deaded orc. Mm, unlikely. It is a little known fact that orcs have no pockets. Then how do they carry their keys? Uncomfortably. Oh dear lord. Adios. Au revoir, Despank. <sighs> Humor is so incredibly puerile and appealing to some people. Greetings! Okay. Time for Godspeed! So I have the outfit. We meet a. You have the uniform. Now go. Okay. If I can remember where to actually go. I need to have a look at my quests again, don't I? Oh dear. Uh, if I can remember it. Oh, God. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I need to go. I can't bloody remember. I can't remember the keys. It's too late in the evening. Ugh. Inventory, equipment, hero cards, map, quest log. Q, of course. There are times when I wish I was using a pad. Get across the POW bridge. Sounds like a plant, which I assume was the one over there. That would make sense. It is the one and only bridge in this area. Still enjoying the visuals, though. There's no doubt about that. There really isn't that much else to say about this game. If if you don't get into the humor and the writing, then it's not all that amazing. Also, there are interrogated chickens. Lord knows why. It's puerile. It's stupid. It's fun. To some degree, at any rate. That is a big chicken. Okay. These guys are getting their vengeance, because in the first game, I think I killed millions of them. Slaughter. Horrendous slaughter of the poultry. Zap. There we go. And the combat system is basic. It's pretty fun. Not amazing. The equipment in the first game, at any rate, was a bunch of linear upgrades, which you swapped out so incredibly rapidly that there was never really any choice involved. There were, say, resistance sets, but it was so obvious when you had to use them, it was not really a choice at all. It's like, well, you know what, I'm entering this area. Oh, suddenly, unsurprisingly, there is a set available that resists everything in this area. So wear it. It's not like it was an actual choice. At the moment, it's pretty difficult to judge any of that because it's so early on in the game. Maybe they have changed it, maybe they haven't. I should probably get a little bit of perspective on this, because this is not an expensive game. It's £10 at the minute, that's probably about $15, I would think, on Steam. If it's anything like the first game, you're paying £10 for about six hours of content. Not incredible, honestly. Okay, I haven't leveled up yet. God, this is taking a while, isn't it? So I did cross the bridge, I have the pen. So we need to go forward some documents, I assume. The quests don't get any more interesting than this, by the way. I keep referring back to the first game. What, op what choice do I have, really? 
I, of the reviews that I've read of this, it said, yeah, it's basically the first game in a different environment with a couple of improvements. And why? Well, because they developed them side by side, which in my opinion was complete and total folly. I mean, really? Greetings, little soldier! Do you have... How do you think it should be done? Well, first, I'd find something to write with. Yeah. I guess next I'd need something to write on. By Jove, I think he's got it. What a genius. And I'd draw a bunch of dinosaurs shooting lasers at a helicopter. Perhaps not. <laughs> Every now and again. Time for me to spring into action. It does have a little bit of fun in it. No doubt about that. Hmm. Something's right on. You know, they have made the quests a little bit more cryptic than last time, haven't they? And the game crash. Well, that's a great freaking start, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Bad PC ports for the lose. Death Bank. Not exactly what I call incredible, is it? My name is Total Biscuit. And I wasted my time. Oh, sorry. I'll see you next time. Yes, quite. Hmm.